Hello everyone, welcome back. This is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. And I want to show you another little micro series video on the new ICOM IC705. Now, for someone who's new, because a lot of people that have a 7300 or 9700 or even a 7610, you understand what this radio is capable of and you're familiar with a lot of the features. But let's say, let's say you're somebody that is new and you're like, man, Eric, I just bought this Zygu, this Chinese radio, which may be fine. But you're like, why? What, what makes this better besides the bands? What's so good about a scope? Well, let me show you as someone who has never seen it before what you can do to make your ham radio experience visual to help you find more stations that are buried in noise or weak or you just didn't know were there. Now, out of the box, you may look at a 705 like this before you turn any of the scope on. The first thing you would probably do is turn the scope on, right? Okay. Now, if you, what's the purpose of the spectrum scope and waterfall? Is to find signals down here. Okay, you can see as I move frequency, you see how I'm moving the line towards, or moving the, the, uh, you know, the signals there towards the line down here. And what that's doing is give me an idea that there is activity there. There's people talking, there's Morse code, there's digital, whatever it may be. Signals being received. Okay? Now, the joy about this radio is I have a lot of different ways that I can set up this scope. The first thing I would do, and I'm going to walk you through how I set my scope up on here in my waterfall. And there's other videos I've done on the, 70, uh, the uh, 7300 9700. But this will make you a little more friendly or customized however you want by color or the type of how you want this to work. Watch this. The first thing I would do is hit the expand set button down here, touch screen. Right there makes the scope bigger, okay? Now, that's not all, but wait, there's more, right? So, looking at this here, again, I can do this a couple ways. I can move the signals to the line to match up so I can see about where they're at. Or, I can go to center fix, and now I can see the entire 20 meter band in a scope right here in front of me okay now in this situation I could look across the entire band and see CW down here digital FTA here voice and I can move the little cursor up and down to wherever I want to be in the band what's up here is this voice yes it is voice contact let's see what's going on down here to CW right you can do it this way or you can move and have a closer uh, zoomed in shot of the scope here and then you could also touch on the screen here and go wherever you want it to go. You see the station up here? Watch this. Right? But you could also do the span and change the span. If you want it to be a little bit wider, you want 100 kilohertz on each side. You know, a 200 kilohertz span. Do you want a 10 kilohertz? Look, see? Okay? Real narrow to find down, to drill down and find that little tiny station. Okay, so we're going to keep going here because there's a lot more you can do. We're going to leave it at a 50 kilohertz sweep here. Now watch this. This is the next thing I would do. I would go into the expand set, okay? And there's four pages here on how to customize the scope. So walk through them real quick. The ones I'm most familiar with and use, okay? The max hold. Now I'm going to turn that off. What the max hold is, the max hold, if you see here, you see how that light blue line in the back diminishes. If there was a blip and it stopped, it's going to keep it up there is a max hold for up to 10 seconds so that you can see there was something there. You see over here, watch this. They talk or whatever and it's gone and you're saying there was something there. But when you get noise up and a lot of noise floor, that clutters in the back there. So I like to turn it off. Okay, that's what I do. I go like this, max hold, turn it off. All I'm seeing here on the spectrum scope is whatever is happening right this second. You see how that popped in there? When it's gone, it's gone. Now you may have a history here on the, you know, descending waterfall there but the spectrum scopes like the real time what's happening right there now you see how fast that is that's really fast and if you don't catch it it's gone right so let's go back into this menu here and I'm gonna go to averaging and turn on the averaging to three now watch how it smooths it out you see how that kind of smoothed out the spectrum scope there and it kind of made it a little bit easier to see as a nice flowing you know flow there it's going okay keep going here a lot of settings here and you can do this however you want I'm going to go to page one here for a second and I'm going to turn center type display to carrier point center 
like this. Okay. Go to page two. So the waveform type we want to do. I like to do fill plus line. Okay. So now I'm going to have a line, and then I'm going to have it filled with a different color to make it really easy to see. You don't have to do that, but watch the waveform color. We're going to turn this down to black. That's the actual waveform on the spectrum scope up top. The fill, you know, the fill color. Turn this to black. Watch this, page three. I'm gonna two, take the line, I'm gonna pick, make the line, uh, make it green, like my 7300. I like the color green on this scope, makes it really easy to see, okay? Waterfall display, yes, and the waterfall speed will go to fast. Just with doing that, watch this. Okay, you see what's happening? There's a, a, an individual green line on there, and then you have it filled in with black, makes it really easy to see. Now, at this point, you have a little more of an effective scope than you had before. And depending on your situation, your antenna, your noise floor, your radio, you may have to mess with this reference. Now, you notice it's all dark. What you don't really want to do is this. You turn the reference all the way up. Now, look, you're going to see a lot of stations, but all that blue in here is noise. So you take the reference down for your specific situation to get rid of noise, but to keep the signals on the waterfall without blanking them out. And if you have too much noise, you can go negative on the reference number and you're only going to see the very strongest signal. Picture it like a visual RF gain for the scope. Okay, RF gain, you got a lot of noise, real you know, close station, you're going to turn the RF gain down a little bit, right? That's kind of how that's working there. Now there's some more we can do here. Let's just go back into here. Now we can go to page four and we have the waterfall size. We can make that large if you want, and that'll make the spectrum smaller, but the waterfall bigger. The waterfall peak color level, grid eight. So there's different options here, one through eight, and uh, that'll give you a different representation of stronger signals versus weaker. For instance, set it to grid five, what happens? Okay, you can see that the stronger signals are gonna appear more like a red on the screen. Watch this, okay? Now that's pretty cool there, because I know that if I have a lot of strong signals and everything's red, I can turn the grid down or up in the number to make it to where only the strongest signals are red. And that'll give me a visual representation of, you know, if everything's red, everything doesn't mean it's strong. But if you set everything to look like that, you know, an S1 signal is going to come up red. You want to see only the red ones. You know, you can tell that he's stronger. Or this, see, you can tell that's a stronger signal than this one because of the color of it. So we'll leave that like that, but you can adjust that as, as needed. And the fixed edges, well, we'll leave that alone. Waterfall marker, auto hide. That means when you use the waterfall marker like this and you go scrolling, it's gonna you know disappear when you land where you're landing, okay? Just like if I go here to center fix, now watch. See how noisy that is? And the line disappeared with the auto? Now watch this, I'm gonna turn the reference down to get rid of all that noise and watch what happens. Okay, see all that noise coming in there? That's all interference. That's my lovely neighbors who decided to put like 19,000 cameras outside because they're afraid I'm gonna come over with my weird antennas and rob them. <laughs> right there, see? Now you see right there, that's the entire snapshot of 14 to 14.350. And uh, that's everything that's going on here. And then you can adjust it how you want it. I kind of like it a little, you know, narrower or a little bit zoomed in, okay? Like this. Where I can see that's 50 kilohertz, 25 on each side of the center line. But now you can see, you know, where the frequency is, where the signals are, and where you can make contacts like that right there. So that's the scope settings. And again, you could do a lot of different ways with this um, to benefit for you, for your visual appeal, for the way you like to hunt weak signals and you know rare DX contacts. It's here on the 705 and a lot of other ICOM radios that resemble the 705. 73 everyone, thanks for watching. More videos on the way on this beauty. KJ4YZI.